So I recently watched Rocket Man, the Elton John biopic, and I did not like it. Not only did it turn all the people in his life into one-dimensional comical caricatures of themselves, it also forced context onto his music in a way that sucked the life out of whatever meaning his fans may have got from listening to it by themselves. It also had a total lack of depth, compelling me in no way whatsoever. Apologies to fans of the films for opening with all that, I appreciate that some people do really, really enjoy this film, but um, I'm sure you got the impression from that that I struggled with it. The thing is, it's got me thinking about musical biopics in general and whether or not they're actually a good idea. We're living in a time when a lot of these films are being made and with many, many more to come that do not give me much confidence as they seem to be totally driven by commercial interest. I'm someone who loves to read into other people's interpretations of musicians and their music, mainly because it helps me build my own picture of the stuff that I listen to. But the issue is when putting that into a film, there's a certain rigidity that you're facing with. You have little choice but to enshrine them when you put them on screen, even if the film paints them in a good or bad light, and that's especially common when these things are marketed as feel-good films. With Rocket Man, that led to this weird combination of stage musical happy clappy song numbers mixed in with heavy drug use scenes, the contrast of which meant neither had any impact on me because it all felt so trivial. I had a similar experience with Bohemian Rhapsody, which struggled with over-idolising Freddie Mercury whilst also wanting to tell a serious story about his life. The scenes about the homophobia, drug use, and isolation that he suffered ended up having this really soft, pitying impact, as though we were watching the backstory for some Britain's Got Talent competitor. Worse still, by trying to emphasise that it's based on a true story and then changing the historical order of events, it insults its audience by taking them for granted. And it won the Oscar for Best Editing. I mean, I cannot fucking stand this movie. Anyway, back on track. The two most recent big successful musical biopics have ended up being shallow and unrewarding because they overdo the praise and underdo the substance, and if I thought that that trend was going to continue, I'd probably end this video here. I mean, come on, the producer for Bo Rap, Mr. Graham King, is working on one for Michael Jackson and for the Bee Gees. Like, what the fuck? It really gets to me. It really, really gets to me, because like, these people, these people, they are they are pop stars, right? We don't need a fucking movie to prove that they are very fucking entertaining. Their success is validated through the fact that they had millions of album sales and millions of record shit. They don't need a film to remind us of that. I'm like, what the fuck is the one about Michael Jackson gonna be? Like, are they gonna have a whole section where they explain how his dad abused him for years? Like, how do you make that feel good? And yet, Baz Luhrmann making one about Elvis Presley and Ziggy Marley making one about his father, Bob Marley. I mean, like, you know, th those could be quite fun, to be honest. I'm open to the idea of it. I'm uneasy about the one about Bob Dylan with Timothy Chalamet, much as I do love the guy, because, well, I, even ugh, even then, though, they do look so ridiculously similar. Like, you know, we're missing, a, we're missing a trick if they didn't try and make something. Maybe all hope is not lost for the cash caravan that is this trend of movies, but how do we ensure that they actually end up being worth their while? Well, to make that argument, I'm going to refer to some of the ones that I do enjoy, because despite the tone of this video, I do love a good musical biopic. The first thing that they need to do is not be a fucking coming of age from rags to riches, from a child singing in her father's church choir to her international superstardom soft predictable trash heap. No, for fuck's sake, not everything wants to be a fucking origin story. Aretha Franklin is fucking Iron Man, is she? I mean, no, she's Aretha sodding great, great gowns, gowns, beautiful, beautiful gowns, gowns, Franklin. It wouldn't be an issue if a few of these films were these sorts of stories, but when all of them are, you go into them knowing exactly what to expect. You're immediately on the back foot for any take that you want to make about someone's life because you have to limp through their struggle to overcome whatever to become an artist. Like, honey, every artist overcomes something to get to success. Not saying that all those struggles are even remotely comparable or equal, but the crying out loud, we know this already! Write something better! Which leads me neatly onto my second point. Taper the story. Focus in on the pivotal points of their lives without turning it into a goddamn boohoo, oh look how hard they had it sob story. Like, 
It's so tiresome. And like with any movie, be careful if you're going to make that time span long. It needs to move through those events at a good pace and put some actual substance in between. This for me is one of the biggest successes of James Mangold's Walk the Line about Johnny Cash's early years. Mangold never looks your sympathy for how Cash behaved in his life. Instead, he tells the story with a slight bluntness that matches the moodiness of much of Cash's music. Every event it included felt necessary and streamlined, which means that the film succeeds just as much as a romantic drama as it does as a musical biopic. This in turn is for me what Bo Rap and Rocket Man fail to do, because every scene feels like something from a stage musical rather than a convincing and genuine portrayal of someone's life. Now maybe some people do want that, but why not just dole in on the fantasy if you want to do that, and stop pretending that this is actually what happened? A perfect segue into my third point, be honest with the audience, either you're telling them the truth of what happened, or you're not. And if you are going to try and portray something accurate, then don't mix in burst out and sing numbers with scenes of hard drug use and call it a fucking fantasy. Got lots of feelings about this film, I'm sure you can understand. Perhaps I'm just thick and don't get the point of a lot of these recent musical biopics, but it's like they take this laissez-faire attitude to the truth whilst pretending to be accurate or based on real events according to their synopses. It just reinforces how callous and commercial these things can be, where not only do they do a lot to over-glorify these people, but they do so by changing the historical events they portray. Like, how much more self-gratifying do you want to be? And if you are going to bend the truth, then why not just go all out with it? This is probably my biggest point to make, though, to be honest, because while there is rigidity in putting your interpretation of someone's music onto film, you don't have that rigidity if you turn it into a fantasy. This is the ultimate success of one of my favourite films of all time, seriously, Milos Forman's Amadeus. Amadeus is a loose retelling of composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's life, where the characters are the same, but the story is not. Instead of trying to actually give a dramatisation of what happened, it imagines a Shakespearean-style rivalry between Antonio Salieri and Mozart. And because it shells off that need for accuracy, it goes whole hog on the drama. Everything is notched up to 11, the pomp, the drama, and ultimately, the tragedy. In doing this, it pulls off what I feel should be the goal of any musical biopic better than any of its rivals. It epitomises how that artist's music makes you feel. This film single-handedly gave me my love for Mozart's music. Like That is an outright success in my view. Fantasy can be used to create something that does more to celebrate someone's life than a retelling of what actually happened in their life can do. Now that's not to say that we should disregard going for something accurate, it's more that if you are going to go through everything that happened in someone's life, you need to make that explicit so as not to insult your audience. Minor spoiler alert for Bo Rap, skip ahead a few seconds if you don't want to hear this vital plot point, but I didn't know that the scene where Freddy told the band that he had AIDS wasn't actually real. And like, that was low-key disgusting to pretend that it was real, right? Because like, you know, he's talking about AIDS for fuck's sake. The fourth point is to do with the music, because you need to be able to match the passion and feeling of that music that you're using with what you're putting on screen. Treat it with respect, use it wisely, and don't just resort to acting like that artist was some sort of musical god. Hence, if you decide to aimlessly shove in all of their greatest hits to score some easy wins with the audience, or put in endless songwriting scenes with these chintzy eureka moments in them, all you're doing is proving that your filmmaking interests are purely commercial and nothing more. Like I said with Amadeus, being able to epitomise how that artist's music makes you feel is something you have to be able to put on film. What you put on screen needs to carry the feeling of that music. If you're going to have scenes explaining how a song was written, just explain how that song was written. Don't try to force a different context on it. Pretending that everything someone wrote was total genius is the laziest the most Disney-ass shit these films pull off. Like, for crying out loud, we know we're not artist is good. That's why we're watching the fucking movie. The fifth and final point that I want to make is more of a suggestion than anything else. Don't restrict yourself to just artists and bands. Musical scenes and movements and genres can be equally as exciting as can writing from the perspective of a producer or a label. A film that I found recently that I really want to make a note of is called Velvet Goldmine. It's a faux history film about the glam rock era and it explores what icons like David Bowie, Iggy Pop and Mark 
Rock, Bolin and the like all meant to their fans. The genius is that by being set in an alternate universe where those artists mentioned are replaced with characters based upon them, it has total freedom to celebrate everything it wants to about glam rock. The result is a film that is all about the audience and what we feel about the music, which at the end of the day is exactly what most musical biopics are trying to profit from. That producer slash label perspective that I mentioned is also well worth a look, best seen in 24 Hour Party People, the film about factory records and the Manchester music scene of the 70s, 80s and early 90s. What works so well here is that it treats the appeal of the music it includes in the same way its fans treat the music. Listeners who like one band on a scene or in a genre are more often than not also going to like other bands in those same scenes and genres. I mean, I'm stating the obvious here, but it's something that some of these films manage to miss incredibly. 24 Hour Party People celebrates every inch of Manchester music, a term for which you can instantly associate so many bands, and that's achieved with its more top-level overview approach. The different perspective allows it to avoid many of the tropes of an artist rising to fame story that make the other ones just so predictable and boring, and also recognise is that music is about a lot more than just the artists. In my view, if more musical biopics followed these rules, we'd end up with more of them that are actually worth watching as films. Inherently, making movies about music relies on the love that people have for that music, and that love does not have to come from the personal life events of an artist. One thing I noticed with Rocket Man was that it seemed to lack some inspiration in points, as though it didn't have enough stuff to take from Elton John's life to include in the movie. And to cope, it turned many of its characters into these comic narrative tropes, the evil music manager villain, the uncaring but wise mother, the faithful friend, all of whom were just one-dimensional. What if, perhaps, they had to resort to those tropes because his life wasn't actually interesting enough to turn into a film? Like. It's okay to admit that someone's life isn't worth turning into a movie. Perhaps if more of these films, especially some of the ones on the way, good shitting lord, were more honest about that, we'd actually get some better films out of them. Well, the points I noted in this video really hinge around is that ability to epitomise why we love an artist. With Rocket Man, I went into it not knowing anything about Elton's life, but also really enjoying a lot of his music, and I left it feeling like I gained absolutely sod all. At the end of the day, musical biopics have to be able to carry the feeling, the vibe, the energy that an artist's music carries, and that ultimately is the only way we'll truly be able to get through this wave of them that we're in the midst of. As a final point, I want to check in with anyone who clicked on this video because they flat out detest or don't like musical biopics and say, yeah, actually I kind of get where you're coming from. Like, if you looked at the current crop of them and just sort of took that as, as all there was in terms of musical biopics, then I would be completely put off as well. Like, most of them are really difficult to sit through. Please don't give up hope on them because there are so many that are worth watching just as there are many bar picks in general that are worth watching. It's more that when the film industry is strangling every single penny out of a musical trend that it can grab, we need to make sure that we're upholding the films that are actually worth their salt. Thanks so much for watching this video guys. Tell me your thoughts down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Outfit check, baby. Today we're rocking my favorite t-shirt in the world at the moment, my nice classic red Puma top. It's slightly oversized, but it kind of fits really well as well. Like, it's a it's a dream come true. Uh, there's a TV show called Deutsch 83, and in the first, maybe the second episode, the main character wears a t-shirt like this. And I think I've known ever since I saw that, that I was gonna have to own this at some point, and well, here we are. Got this from Hobo's Vintage in Cardiff. It's my favorite vintage store in the world, to be honest. So thank you to them once again for fitting out more of my wardrobe. I swear to God, at least like a quarter of it has come from that one shop. So you you know, you're doing good, guys. Combining it with these, um, let me just try and get my leg up, not in that way, but um, these nice sort of like khaki sort of shorts. They're made out of denim, but they're like flexible as well. And they're like, you can take them in the sea. They're, they're an amazing combination of things. But this is like being my fit of the summer, to be honest, really. Like oversized t-shirt with nice shorts that show off a bit of thigh because men need to show off their thighs more. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.